Right, so now we've checked that the flow is working okay through the heater matrix and that the tap isn't blocked, but we're still not getting uh, any warm water through there. But as I say, we've ruled that out. The next thing we're going to do is um, check the thermostat and probably go on to um, change it, but also check there's no blockages around that affecting the flow. Um, the thermostat on the uh, K-series engine is right down the back and you probably can't even see it and you can get it out and uh, change it without moving this inlet manifold but it really is uh, a very um, sort of fiddly and awkward job so what we're going to do is remove this inlet manifold so that we can get in there but what it will also do is just make sure that um, any areas like this um, aren't blocked or water flow that comes near the uh, inlet manifold it also gives us a chance to change the gasket on that as well uh, what we do at the moment is just disconnecting all the um, pipes and wiring that's connected to this there's quite a few um, you've got this wiring up the top here you've got these two um, vacuum hoses or sort of they suck out from the um, case in there um, you've also got the um, plug that goes on here and the um, pipe goes on here we've removed all that so far uh, of course we have to remove uh, this pipe here from the um, inlet manifold uh, and you've got the main plug that's um, right down in here to remove the term um, I think feeds most of the injectors and other wiring and goes past this manifold uh, that's a bit of an awkward um, plug it's got a special little technique to getting that off and hopefully I'll be able to show you that once we've got it off right so what we've done here is the pipe that just sits on there we've removed that uh, to get more access to this plug down here. And the reason I thought it was worth showing this is because this isn't like the normal sorts of plugs. And what you've got is at the top here, you can see this tab, and what I've been doing is slowly levering that up with the screwdriver, and what that does is as that comes, as you lever that up, it actually unplugs the two joining connectors together so rather than pushing on a little clip and they unplug you lever that up and that unplugs them so no pins are bent quite a clever idea but if you've never come across it um, it can sort of catch up because it doesn't open the normal way that's all you have to do is slowly lever this up and come right up and once it's up the um, two parts of the plug come completely apart so that's what i'm going to carry on doing now you see just a little bit of that was up and then what you can then do is get your fingers in and you can pull that all the way up and you can see these two slots have now appeared and they've actually pulled the plug completely apart and that then allows you to disconnect it and carry on with removing this what we've also done of course is here you've got the throttle cable so we've disconnected uh, the throttle cable from there as uh, well and what we've done is disconnected the um the vacuum to the brakes we've then disconnected it this end because it's kind of molded on here so it's easier to remove it from the um the brake end at that end and we've also taped off so no dirt can get in there while we're doing the uh job right so that's now that plug disconnected so as you can see what you do is you just push them gently together and then when you push this piece down like that it then pulls them together and they lock in so the idea is you don't bend any of the pins but yeah hope that helps if you've come across that and not aware of how that opens it's completely different to most of the other plugs because most of the connections on the rovers are like these ones that go on the coil where you just push the little piece of plastic there and uh, pull it away and while we're talking about that this coil wire has got to be removed because it goes through and connects into the loom on this so that's the next bit to do is to remove that coil wire out and then everything should be disconnected we should just be able to uh, unbolt the inlet manifold uh, the bolts are down there there's some at the top and some underneath and that'll let us get that uh, away right so one of the things you will need to remove is this little water pipe here off the back of the uh, manifold as well and um, with this is always the way this plug here 
this cowling blocks it so you can't actually get it off so it's one of those cases you'd either have to take this off which you certainly don't want to do so what we'll have to do is unbolt this uh, coil pull it out remove the plug and then just sit it back in there uh, that would be the easiest way around that so though it might seem a bit over the top we found it easier actually to remove the coils one thing is it gets them out the way so you're not leaning the cross them and these had to be unplugged anyway we've um, unthreaded the lead through this bracket down there and that's now out the way um, it looks like the last thing to do is to remove the um, fuel pipe that goes off to the fuel rail we're going to remove it from the filter end because that looks the um, easiest way to uh, do it and I think it's how we've done it before and then it really will be time to then start unbolting the um, manifolds So at the moment we're just removing the nuts off the uh, manifold. We've done the ones at the um, bottom and uh, now we're doing the ones on the uh, top and then we'll be able to just pull it away. Right, so that's all the bolts removed and as you can see it easily then just starts to fall away and it's just a case of then uh, moving it right out. Last thing we found as we were beginning to um, remove this is the um, backflow of the petrol to the tank. Uh, that's this green bit here, and it's actually nice and easy to remove. It's one of those connections where you simply just um, pull this little black plastic thing in and uh, pull it away, and uh, that's out. So now we've got to see if there's any other little bits just hanging that are stopping it from coming off. And uh, that is it, more or less, sir. Uh away leaving a, a much better and a more spacious void so that we can then get in and uh, do the thermostat which is down there as i say it can be done without removing all of that but this is going to make things uh, a lot lot easier it allows to change the gasket on that uh, the only other thing is that when you unbolt the um, manifold this little pipe here is uh, fixed on there so that more or less will come away as part of doing that so that is uh, all of that removed ready for us to start the um, work on the thermostat the other thing that will make it easy and where we've struggled in the past is this pipe here you do have to remove that so you can get the thermostat out and with it fixed right down in there you can imagine it is a very fiddly and difficult job so things should be a lot easier for us to do this job and get a good inspection in there. Yeah so looking at the back of the engine that void between the um, bulkhead and the uh, engine again you can see how much easier it's going to make it for us to get to the thermostat but it also lets you see the hoses that we were looking at in the last video which are these uh, heater hoses and you can then see how it will um, it flows through into the heater and back out but when this valve is closed here this like rubber joint molding piece with a tie around it has actually got a little hole through it so that the water can flow along here up through there and into this hose that just gives you a little better view if you watched the last video where we were uh, talking about that so now the case is um removing this firm set house and i think the uh, easiest thing to do normally is to start removing this big pipe that's uh, here so i just want to give you a little better look at the inlet manifold uh, they're now off of the car and you can see where it um mounts to the car you've got um seven holes here where the where the studs come through and this is bolted onto the back of the uh, engine and it's also a side that you don't normally um, see this back so because it's very difficult to uh, get in there or of course get a camera in right so now we're going to remove this pipe which allows you to uh, get the thermostat housing out there's two mounting points one that we're undoing down there and then one that's uh, just there so we're going to undo those and of course we have to undo the little jubilee clip where the um, rubber pipe connects with this red painted metal pipe which on yours probably won't be painted uh, red we've got our engine painted blue and red and we painted this pipe at the time of doing that but yeah that's the easiest way of getting this firm stat in out is to remove this pipe right so we've now removed those two bolts that hold this um pipe on 
which of course goes to our thermostat housing. Uh, the only other bolt that holds it on, it actually holds the thermostat housing onto the back of the engine is this bolt here and that goes through your um, dipstick there so uh, they're all removed and now this is a lot lot looser and it'll be a case of removing it all out so we can check the thermostat And uh, that's it out. So as you can see, it's a sort of a little bit of wiggling and levering. And you can see, hopefully, um, down there, that the thermostat housing goes into that almost side bit at the back of the uh, engine. Just there. As you can see, I'm moving it. So now all we've got to do is just pull that away and we can have a look at the thermostat. So I just want to show you this now. The thermostat's clear. All the housing is clear. You can see the hole just down there where it went in and uh, actually that is the back of the uh, water pump there so I'll just pan out so you can just see um, the back of the engine and uh, where that pipe and thermostat house and actually sit. Right so we've removed the thermostat housing from this it's just a case of pulling it out and now what we're doing is just undoing those three bolts so we can split the housing apart and remove the thermostat. So that's the thermostat housing split apart and uh, there sitting in there is the thermostat which the next stage is for us to uh, do a little test on that. So we put the thermostat in some um, water, we're heating it up so if it does open And the thermostat is uh, open, it looks like it's opened at around about 90 so that is working Right, so as you see from that last clip, the thermostat opens okay. And um, looking at the temperatures and looking at the uh, Haynes manual, it more or less opens at the temperatures it should do within reason. So that means the flow isn't being stopped by a um, faulty thermostat. Of course, in the other video, we were checking the flow through the heater matrix and this little valve down here that lets the water flow into the heater matrix and, of course, the bypass. So as far as we can tell, there's no major flow problems um, there's no um, flow problems in the radiator that are a uh, major either so I thought I'd just show you the thermostat going back into its housing. We've decided to put a new thermostat in, although the old one worked, as you um, see just a minute ago when we were doing that um, test. Now, the new thermostat, and we have had this before, doesn't come with this little rubber ring that you can see around it. So we've took it off the uh, old one and... Uh, and used it that doesn't come in our head gasket kit that we bought for the uh, next video we're going to be doing either so um, that's just the way we have to do it it needs it to uh, to seal it but it is the right firm stack and it's got the right um, heat um, temperature for when it opens marked on it as well so we know that it will open and uh, close at the right temperatures um, that's the way round it goes with the spring side going into the housing here which uh, faces the engine and uh, when it opens it lets the cold water that's sitting here um, through into the engine to help cool it down one thing to be aware of is to make sure you do get this round the right way because a lot of thermostats you can only put in the way it's meant to but with this one it will actually sit in completely the wrong way round and again that will cause problems a bit like a head gasket it calls um flow problems and uh, even seems to cause airlock problems as well in the system so that's certainly worth being aware of and i just thought i'd show you that housing split in half so you can see there how the thermostat sits in it and the layout of it so um hopefully that's helped you if you are interested in changing the thermostat due to a fault we will have to move on and carry on fault finding um it's just a case of putting all of that um, back in the way that we um, took it all to bits and hopefully if we do another video we'll cover that in that but uh, as this video goes hopefully that's helped you don't forget to look at the others and look at future videos as we continue on with this uh, job